Hi everyone, I'm Boya Bunda. Good evening. On behalf of PhilDocs or the Filipino Documentary Society, welcome to the Ang Docu, the home of Philippine documentaries. Tonight, we talk about documentaries. At siyempre ang mga documentarists. At ano ang papel nila sa kwento ng bayan at kwento ng mamamayan. Ang mga pelikula po na ating uh, pinalabas itong mga nakaraang araw bear witness to a narrative's power to awaken, engage, inspire, and even enrage. Power that can affect change, yet vulnerable to abuse. Sana ay tingnan ho natin ang mabuting ating line-up ng mga pelikula ngayong linggo. Under the theme, Nation, Perception is Real, Truth is Not, on theangdocu.com slash watchna. Halos manasahan ng bakal. Hindi na lang sa bala. Hindi na lang sa patalim. Go. Ganito raw humingi ng kapatawaran. Mabilisan na nag-report at nagpadala ng mga litrato ang mga kasama ko. Pinagsuspechahan pa kaming Abu Sayyaf dahil sa dami namin mga lalaki. Siya yun. Diba hardcore siyang Marxist? <laughs> Being a mother in the revolution is your children in the right place. Dito sa Region 11, you have succeeded in crushing the communists and we look up to you. Hinihingi namin ipatupad yung tunay na reforma sa lupa. $500 dollars each to oust Aquino from power. The right against self-incrimination and the right to remain silent. The internal security of the nation is the function of my department and I can tell you now, it's going to be missed. What had started as a walkout by a small group of Filipinos became a boycott. The men had set in motion one of the biggest labor struggles in American history. Matulungan. Ang duration ng research ay kung gaano man katagal ang relasyon natin. Ang end goal ay ang ating eventual permanent reunification in five years at the earliest. Si Mendal sinasabi niya na pabalikin lang siya rito sa Pilipinas, hindi siya makikialam sa politika, pero unang-una siya nagpahil ng kandida siya. Nandiyan ko ako naman, nalala niya pa rin yung pagiging business mind niya. Makukuha niya lahat, matalino si Miriam, pero masyado siyang brutal. Mahirap ka parang ni Ramos ang pagiging presidente dahil naging pisa siya sa military. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga nagmamasid at nakikisa sa ating pagtitipon ngayong araw na ito. Welcome to the Undocu. Reality check, perception is real, truth is not. Please welcome our guest. Umpisa natin, uh, the faculty regent of UP Diliman and the Philippine and Southeast Asian Studies scholar, Professor Ramon Guillermo. Professor Guillermo, magandang, salamat. Magandang uh, pagbati sa inyo lahat, mga tagapakinig at tagapanood ngayong gabi. Our next guest is a film scholar, writer, and filmmaker. One of his documentaries, made in Singapore, is in this week's lineup, Professor Clodoaldo Doy Del Mundo Jr. Hi, Doy. 
Hi. Hi, boy. Kumusta? Mabuti naman. Ikaw, kumusta? Good, good. Okay. Good. Our next guest is a filmmaker and director of many landmark films, including Imelda, which we screened in September. Her newest film is A Thousand Cuts. Ramona Diaz. Hi, boy. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being with us. And of course, of course our, uh, our next guest is a sociologist from the University of Canberra and the editor of the Duterte Reader. Nahuli ko hong nakita ay sabi nga niya, hindi pa presidente si President Duterte, Nicole Colato. Hi, Nicole. Hello po, pagbati sa lahat ng nanonood. Sa lahat ng mga nanonood, you can share your opinions, post your questions on our Daang Docu social media pages. Kaya pwede ho kayong makiisa, makisalamuha uh, sa ating pag-uusap na ito. And today's flashback is co-presented by the Concerned Artists of the Philippines. Maraming salapa na the Philippine LGBT Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say hi to the students and faculty members of Miriam College, Ateneo de Manila, Bilira National High School, malapit ito sa amin, PUP, San Carlos University, and Davao National High High School. Sa lahat sa inyo, maraming maraming salamat. Dito natin umpisahan. Uh, <laughs> ano ba ang documentary as a genre? At sino ba ang documentarist? At anong papel niya uh, sa kwento ng bayan at ng mamamayan? Professor Guillermo, let's start with you. Um, uh, Karaniwang sinasabi na ang, dokument- ang dokumentaryo ay nagpapakita ng mga tunay na pangyayari. Ano? Uh, at uh, parang uh, malapit sa balita pero hindi tulad ng balita na talagang uh, mga kasulukuyang mga nangyayari ang uh, dokumentaryo ay pwedeng uh, matagal ang proseso ng paggawa at matagal din yung pag-conceptualize at uh, ang uh, siguro ang isa pang kakayahan ng dokumentaryo kumpara sa balita ay pwedeng mas malalim ang ipakita niyang pagsusuri sa mga manonood pwedeng uh, at maliban din sa balita, ay pwedeng magkaroon ng komentaryo. Pwedeng magkaroon ng, uh, ng konting uh, katuwaan. Pwedeng may mga biro. Pwedeng may talas ang kanyang suri. Kaya ang uh, dokumentaryo ay uh, may pagkakaiba sa simpleng uh, pagbabalita o pagpapakita ng, ng uh, kasulukuyang mga nangyayari. Kaya yun siguro yung isang uh, katangian nito. Kaya yun paman, natin mga pelikula. Ano? Yung pelikula ay... Siguro masabi nating tunay na o ganap na fictional no. Ang uh, dokumentaryo ay hindi talaga aalagwa patungo sa talagang pure fiction. Kailangan nitong uh, tumungtong pa rin sa realidad at saka sa mga kaganapan ng panahon. Ramona may nais ka bang idagdag at siguro ituloy na natin doon as to who is the documentarist at ano ang kanyang papel uh, sa kwento ng bayan at ng mga mamamayan. I can only speak to what I do as a documentary filmmaker. Okay. No? So I am not, um, um, I add to what journalists do. So as a documentary filmmaker. You um, add to what journalists do. Okay. Yeah. So I don't replicate. So I'm not a journalist. I'm not a journalist making films. I add to what they do. So what I do, I, what I do is I film behavior, right? I film attitude. So more akin to ethnography but not ethnography because I take then the footage and I craft it and use the tools of cinema, the language of cinema to craft a film. So what is that? Like music, sh- different shots, you know, different um, close-ups, wide shots, uh, editing. So what I'm giving you is a mediated experience. There's not, nothing objective about it. We, we, I don't pretend to be objective. I am giving you an experience of uh, what I've experienced. So it's mediated. That, that's what I do. So hopefully it adds to what journalists do because usually they say, well, it's journalistic. It, it really isn't. Okay. So that's, okay. that's what I do. Okay. Doi, from the lens, from the prism of a filmmaker, may nais ka bang sabihin, Doi, at... Itawid natin doon sa role ng documentarist vis-a-vis the story of the nation and its people. Well, the, uh, the role of the documentary filmmaker is uh, quite close to 
the role of the journalists. You know, both, both of them are after the truth, or at least a truth about uh, historical reality. Um, maybe a major difference is that the documentary filmmaker is not just there to do document an event, but to tell a story. So the, the documentary filmmaker looks for a narrative to, about a historical reality. So it's, uh, it has affinities with the different genres, you know, the fiction films and the journalistic uh, news. Um, the documentary filmmaker also tells a narrative, <clears throat> a story, a story. And uh, hopefully at the end, the documentary filmmaker would be able to share with the audience a truth about a historical reality that uh, he or she has witnessed. Okay. Historical narrative. Nicole, punta lang kita. Kasi kanina yung sinabi nga ni um, Ramona, uh, what she does is mediated. She does not pretend to be objective. Uh, and then do I started to talk about the truth? Your, your take on this. I mean, kasi yung titulo nga ng ating pag-uusap nito, this engagement is about perception is real, truth is not. Nicole? Yes. Actually, I agree with Ramona. Um, for me, a documentary is a shared experience. It's an experience in the sense that there's the filmmaker who shares his or her experience to the audience, but also the audience engages the documentary, which is also shared by other audiences. Pero sumasang ayon din ako kay Doy when he said na um, it's a version of reality because I think a documentary is a truth claim. It should never assert that it's the single truth out there because we bore witness to that version of truth. But it's, I think, um, it's a provocation to a conversation. It's an invitation to extend the national narrative as portrayed in the documentary. Okay. I, 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 can I also say yeah, that we should, ahead, we should differentiate between truth and fact, right? Yeah. There are facts and there are truths. So I'm also guided by values of, uh, of, of, of journalism. Like I, I will not ever uh, say it's nighttime when it's daytime. I won't ever change certain facts about the characters I follow. So the, I, I think that that's very, they're very different, right? A truth is like, um, th there's emotional truth, there's literal truth, but facts are facts. It's raining outside, it's raining outside. It's okay. nighttime, it's nighttime. They, you know, so I think we should differentiate between the two. Okay, uh, just to build on it. Uh, when you talk about the truth, ako bilang manunood, uh, ng uh, moving images, hindi lamang ng dokumentaryo at iba pang uh, visual media. Paano ko nalalaman kung ang isang dokumentaryo ay nagsasabi nga nung, you know, a part of the truth or the truth or nagsasabi ng facts? How would I know? Uh, anybody can answer? I think, uh, boy, uh, that you, you just have to trust the documentary filmmaker that he or she is telling the truth, a truth about uh, an experience you know, of a historical reality. Uh, Doy, I'm sorry, but the doc that, Doy, I'm sorry, para lamang klaro, but is that to say na lahat ng documentarists ay qualified? I mean, who's a documentarist? I mean, may lisensya ba ito? Meron ba tayong listahan ng mga iginagalang? Meron ba kaming basehan kung ito, kapanipaniwala ito? Well, uh, the, the documentary filmmaker has the, the believes in some principles, right? Like, like uh, sharing his or her view of a historical reality and that for him and to, to deliver a truth, right? And uh, if there are filmmakers who go against that uh, uh, belief or that principle, then that filmmaker is uh, committing an aberration of what the documentary film is all about. Right. Like uh, like journalists, you know, journalists have uh, their principles, you know, to to uh, to to, to de deliver uh, the the truth about uh, an, an event. You know? And and there are those who say that they practice journalism, but they are trolls. You know, they are not after the truth or they don't present facts as Ramona would say and uh, 
they, they're an aberration of the, the, the work of journalists. They're an aberration of the principles of journalism. Yeah. So right. documentary filmmakers would also stand by that ideal of presenting a truth about a historical reality. Um, okay. I, I, I say this, Doy, kasi uh, pag merong, um, may, hindi lahat, pero may mga tao, halimbawa, and there's this general perception that the documentary is more credible. Kung gusto ko maging credible, gagawa ako ng isang documentary. Professor um, Guillermo, dito pumapasok that it can, it's also open to propaganda. Uh, diretsahin na natin, halimbawa, yung elements of revisionism. Uh, pag pinag-uusapan natin yung pagtanaw natin, halimbawa, sa nakaraan. Um, how, what is your take on this? That
ko yung magang, magandang standard is we teach our students and ourselves as viewers to ask, first, does this resonate? If the feelings that I get from this documentary make sense to me, the next question we have to ask is, why does it make sense to me? Why does it resonate with me? What are my political beliefs? What are my social conditions? That allow this documentary to speak. That allow this documentary to speak to me. So, if even if people watch the same documentary, even if they have varying interpretations of the quality of truth that that documentary puts forward, um, hindi natin pwedeng going arbiters yung audience in terms of the objective quality of that documentary. We can be arbiters of our own uh, reception of how the documentary. Um, make sense in our world. So I think mas introspective yung sa akin na okay. we have to be self-critical with the way we receive the messages of these films. Okay. Doi, I want to go to the questions because it seems like uh, I think we all agree that documentaries provoke, you know, engage uh, people in uh, discussion and it's good to ask questions. Pero uh, the reality also is that lalo na, I mean, th this may be not uh, a fair uh, observation, pero Parang hindi tayo open masyado sa pagtatanong. Where is it coming from? Uh, napag nagtanong ka, kalaban. Napag nagtanong ka, hindi mo na iintindihan. Napag nagtanong ka, you're provoking gulo. You know, uh, students are, are, are eavesdropping on this conversation. C can, you, can you talk about it, Doi? Uh, well, th there's uh, one, one uh, scholar of the documentary who says that the documentary is susceptible to the question, might it be lying? Mm. Pag pinanood, meron tayong pinanood na documentary, the, 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 the film is always susceptible to that question, might it be lying? We don't ask that question with, you know, uh, fiction films, you know, the, the feature films that, that we see uh, in the theaters. Uh, because we know that these uh, feature films are imagined and fantastic and uh, the, it's, it's all a lie, right? It's all set up by the studios and, and the actors and the directors, etc. But the documentary film, film is always susceptible to that question. And we may have that question, but we trust that the, the filmmaker, again, the documentary filmmaker, we trust that he, he or she is showing us a truth. If not, then then if there is that question, nagging question, might it be lying? Then we we have to to be more active viewers, right? To do mm. our uh, research or to ask questions uh, uh, and to talk about it. The the documentary film should not be a, a finished film, you know, on the screen after watching it. That's it. We we uh, we don't even talk about it. No. The documentary film needs to be talked about and argued, and uh, at, because the the film is not a finished one, the 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 audience, the viewers have to do something about the film and finish it. Okay, uh, Professor. Uh, Gilead, may, 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 may yeah. Oh, go ahead. Pero sa kasing Gilead, mo, idagdag mo na rin yung kasi maganda yung usapan natin doon yes. sa mga lying, no? Uh, sa mga documentaryists uh, ba, meron mga bagay na deliberately ino-omit, deliberately iniiwasan, at bakit hindi ito documentary as a genre, bakit hindi ito nakakakuha ng atensyon mula sa big media? Uh, uh, hindi naman uh, totally, no? Pero can you address that? Uh, anong hindi nakakuha ng atensyon yung documentary? Uh, 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 it's not given enough attention in media. Ah, okay. Uh, siguro, um, uh, na-discuss kanina yung usapin ng audience, ano? Kasi um, totoo, ang audience ng uh, isang form, katulad ng documentary, hindi yan, uh, hindi passive. passive no? But audiences can also be constructed through a process yes. of uh, feedback, communication. Ano? Kaya isabihin, ang, 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 ang isang audience, uh, nag-develop din yan through the production of uh, documentaries. May mga masabi siguro tayo, mga na, may mga cultures, for example, with a very strong tradition of making very good documentaries. You know? We might see some, uh, for example, um, uh, BBC, for example, would there be a kind of, uh, uh, would they have developed a great uh, uh, high level and high quality uh, tradition of making uh, documentaries. Ito ay nakaka-produce na audience din. Audience na merong uh, mas mataas na antas ng discernment kaugnay ng uh, mga documentaries. They will have higher expectations 
uh, from documentaries, if a culture uh, has that kind of uh, uh, prevalence no, of documentaries, and, and also uh, yung pagpapahalaga sa mga document, dokumentaryo, kung, gan, kung merong ganyang tradisyon sa isang lipunan. Sa palagay ko, uh, napakaganda na ganitong klaseng uh, festival of films ng documentaries ngayon. No? At dapat mas maraming manood nito dahil talagang ano, nakakabukas ng mata uh, ng mga uh, tagapanood. At uh, ito yung paraan para din maging mas uh, mas mapansin ano sa mas pangkat, mas malawak na publiko ang mga ginagawa ng mga dokumentarista. Bagamat meron ding mga advantages ang ang kasalukuyang uh, panahon kahit ngayon. Uh, nakaka-zoom tayo, may marami. Eh, can people can actually look, watch many many good documentaries online. And this is a good good uh, good uh, ano to, um, development. Kasi noon, uh, ano ba pang panukin yung rusting of deeds? Uh, na na documentary eh talaga hindi pinapalabas no nobody could watch it ano eh, ganyan lang yung first uh, time na pinalabas sa Pilipinas officially ang Rusting of Leaves no araw they had to watch it through um, underground film showings etc pero ngayon ay mas marami ng uh, posibilidad na makapanood ang mga Pilipino ng mga magagaling na mga lalo na ang gawa ng mga uh, dokumentaristang uh, uh, Pilipino ano at um, yung uh, uh, yung uh, yung nais kong uh, idagdag kanina ano ay uh, um, <clears throat> para may kinalaman sa ano eh sa sa uh, sa teachers and sa pedagogical aspect ano sa pedagogical aspect ng ng documentary na tal teacher ako ano uh, alam ko naman na nabanggit niyo dito boy kanina yung problema ng pagtatanong ano ng mga estudyante oh. at uh, yung isang dahilan kung bakit may mga hindi tatanong ng mga estudyante ay dahil din sa kultura ng pagtuturo, kultura ng edukasyon. Hindi ito kasalanan na ng mga guru. Ano? Ito ay isang uh, buong sistema na no, umiiral uh, sa atin. At uh, yung mga documentaries natin, mga teachers yan. Ano? And uh, they want to teach. Ano? And like good teachers, they want to have good methods. Good methods for teaching. And, and doon sa mga document, documentaries na pinarod natin, a lot of them, after watching it, talagang umiiling-iling ako, a lot of it after watching them, parang I was sort of uh, feeling na uh, ganun pala yun, ano? It, 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 it sort of it, it shocked me ano kumbaga may merong merong may mga images na pinakita may mga questions in the recent documentary which made me feel uneasy which made me feel that i had to look at things again ano kaya uh, yun yung pinaka i think pinaka compelling na mga uh, documentaries at maganda yung mga pinili mga documentaries para sa festival na to after watching them you feel you're not the same ano you feel that you are shaken up. Ang mga kabataan niya, sabihin niya, I was shook, ano, sabihin ng mga sudyante ko. Ano? Dahil sa dokumentaryo na yan, dahil sa mga images na ipinakita. If you go, if you finish watching a documentary, nothing happened like that, I think uh, there might be a problem with your uh, documentary. Or it might be a simple documentary, you know, showing, for example, people how to cook something or what. No? Hindi naman kinakailangan masyadong uh, uh, problema doon. Pero kung political documentaries and historical, tulad ng ating mga ginagawa ngayon, eh talagang ano, Uh, may malaking uh, responsibility for uh, yung pedagogical aspect of our documentaries. Okay. This is a very clear thing point we need to discover, yes. Okay. Ramona, punta tayo dun sa yung may observation nga na uh, there are stories na iniiwasan. There are stories that are omitted by storytellers, by documentarists. Is that a function of your not being objective? Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Your thoughts? You mean choosing certain subjects over others or omitting yeah, certain aspects of the story that yeah, you're making? Certain aspects of the story because you cannot have all in, you know, in a yeah. certain material, for example. Uh, to me, that is just a form of film, right? Or the time limits of 90 minutes. Usually okay. I make 90 minute films. You, it's like a thesis. You really have to figure out what story you're telling and craft a story that makes it cohesive. So it, something's bound to not be included in the film. Ramona, it's right? not born you, out of, I'm sorry, it's not born out of a bias. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking yeah, about- Yeah, you know, maybe subconscious bias too, right? I mean, like, uh, um, uh, for example, for every, okay, an example is uh, A Thousand Cuts, right? I okay. filmed many, many characters. But the way I film is immersive. I stay with my characters for a long time, over a, a year, over months. And um, as the story unfolds, someone becomes the center of gravity of the story. And so characters fall through the wayside, even if I've filmed them a lot. 
And then you get to the edit room and it's very, uh, and this is seldom talked about in documentaries, but there is a thing as casting in documentaries. Okay. It, it's also who takes the light, right? Who is, even if you have a great story to tell, if you're not a great storyteller, that's a five minute YouTube clip, right? It's not a full length film. So there's so many things that are beholden to the form of film and to the form and to your time limit. But there was also one other thing that I wanted to put in the mix in terms of lying and truth, not truth, is what do you do with an unreliable narrator, right? An unreliable character. Uh, that's a whole other uh, consideration. How do you deal with that? Uh, uh, my very first film was about a very unreliable narrator, Imelda Marcos. She was telling stories that I did not know whether it was true or not, but they were fascinating stories. And it said more about her character than the story itself, right? Did Irving Berlin really compose a, story, uh, a, a, a song for her? Not so much, right? I mean, but the, uh, it's so unlikely that Irving Berlin would have composed a song, but I included it in the film and and fashion, and fashion, hopefully that people really uh, got that it was not very reliable, that story, based on context, right? It's, an, it's a context of the whole film. You see that maybe she's not very reliable. But I like the story because it's such a fascinating story and it's more about her character than the story itself. Okay, got that. Do I, yeah. People are talking now about impact documentaries. Um, we, we, we hear of this in a different language when we do commercial films, no? Kailangan may connect ka sa audience. Kailangan nakakatawid ka doon sa iyong manunood. Let's talk about you as a documentarist. Uh, and, and the impact. Do, do you have that in mind as you do your uh, your film, your documentary? I don't think so. You know, when uh, when right. when I, I guess when when someone da works on a project, the, the the main objective is to to do that project and finish it. You know, with, without thinking about the marketing aspect or reaching or how you create an impact on uh, audiences. Uh, uh, unlike, you know, commercial films where at the very outset, the marketing and the distributors are in the planning stage itself, you know, play, play, how, yeah. how to, to create an impact. Uh, but there, there are, the, the, I, I guess the documentary filmmaker has just to make sure that uh, he or she reaches an audience, you know, I, I remember uh, a film uh, by Ditsi Carolino about uh, uh, Bunso, you know, a young uh, boy uh, who is imprisoned with uh, adult uh, prisoners. So that, that film reached uh, some policymakers and it made an impact because they, they did. Uh, uh, a, a, a bill, they passed a bill that would uh, separate the, the young you know, uh, prisoners from the adult prisoners. So that had an impact on, on, uh, uh, on the, the subject that, that she uh, dealt with in, in that film. So it, it's a matter of, I guess, how you use the film later on you know, uh, to, to gain that, that impact. But while doing it, I, I don't think the, the filmmaker, the documentary filmmaker thinks of the, the impact that it would create. Of course, that I guess he or she is hopeful that that film would create an impact, but that's not in, you, you know, know that, in the process of doing the film, yeah. Okay. Nicole, uh, you know, somebody once said to me, among other things, a documentary is supposed to initiate a better understanding of the past, you know, in reference, uh, you know, among among other other things that you know a documentary does, uh, in 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 uh, in the context of that understanding of the past, how 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 do you assess our documentaries? I think one way to talk about our documentaries is how fragmented the stories of the nation of this nation are. Na parang 
we can see the diversity of stories being told. So for example, the Imelda example, um, it's the same film people can watch, but people can interpret that story differently. Probably for some people, Imelda is actually a reliable narrator because she tells a story of the past that resonates today uh, to some people. So I think the way we assess how our documentaries today talk about the past is whether it, it bridges the conversations of people who are coming from different perspectives. We may not agree in the end, but the documentary becomes that bridge for us to come together and begin that conversation. Okay, uh, this is for Doy and Ramona. Paano ba gumawa ng documentaries? Ayong, ano bang nauuna sa proseso? Storia, shooting? Sino bang nag-finance ng documentaries? Can you, can you bring us there? Uh, how, how, how do you do your documentaries? Ramona, please. And then we go to Doy. Yeah, so... Um... So I live in the States, right? So I, I, I produce my films here, but I, I, I shoot most of my films, most of them in, in the Philippines. So I, I, I raise money here and it's a combination of grants, uh, which what we call soft money and, um, and in, um, equity investment, which from is the, really- the Philippines, Ramona? No, no, from here. Ah, from here. I live here. So yeah, from here. So there are grants, soft money. So basically the soft money it's outright, you don't have to give it back, right? It is an outright grant to you. And then there is a, a equity investment, which is becoming very popular now in documentaries here in the US where there are actual investors in film and they get their, there's a waterfall at the end. They get their money back and then plus, plus, right? Plus uh, points. Uh, so it is a, or, and then there's public money because we have uh, from public television, public television gives money here. So it's a combination. You, you sort of put all those sources together to, um, to finance a film. That's what happens. Do you, do you earn big money in documentaries? No. I mean, if you want to earn money, don't do documentaries. <laughs> but I always make it a point to pay myself. You know, like I do have a budget. I, I, I like... Um, I like I like paying people. I like paying the crew. I think that's important because this is a it has to be sustainable. Um, so I never start a film without um, uh, some kind of financing, because I I, I do like um, yeah I, I do like paying myself and the people that I work with. So in other words, you become you are part of the budget. I I, I get that yes. uh, sense. Do I, what is your process as a filmmaker? I think a very important thing is that uh, the, the, there's a, a subject that resonates with the filmmaker okay. and that he connects with or he empathizes with or he finds very important, you know, to devote his part of his life, you know, to, to do a film. Uh, and unless it is a, a sponsored film, you know, that, that's a different uh, thing. Uh, but usually I think the man, many of the films that, that we've seen in, 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 in this week's uh, Dang Docu, uh, I, I guess were done by the filmmakers because of their uh, connection with the, the subject that, that, that they filmed. Uh, about financing, in, in my case, uh, with, with Made in Singapore, I, uh, I worked on it on a zero, zero budget. Yeah. Because I, I did it while I was in Singapore then uh, uh, teaching. And uh, during my free time, I, I would shoot the, the film, especially during weekends when there were a, a lot of uh, Filipina domestic helpers you know, on, on, uh, on a day off. Uh, it was on, on a zero budget. I, I hope that the film doesn't look like uh, it was done on a zero <laughs> budget, but uh, yeah. So uh, okay. it, it's, it's a different thing, you know, where, where the financing uh, comes from. You know. Don't we have grants in uh, the country, in the Philippines? I'm, uh, I'm, well, sometimes you get grants from the NCCA or the National Commission for Culture and the Arts or uh, the Film Development Council. But usually our filmmakers go outside, you know, go abroad to look for grants. If, if you look at uh, uh, Alex uh, Ayn Arumpak's uh, film, Aswang, you know, you would see all the, the agencies that, that uh, you know, supported uh, her film. Yeah. 
Okay. So, our, our our present filmmakers, the young ones, they're very aware of where to get these grants. They're okay. very you know good at it. So the, the both of you, mabilis and lamang. So why do you do documentaries? Why do I do documentaries? Yeah. Okay, for, for me personally, there is an attraction to something that, that uh, is real. You know, I, I see real events or real people and real issues and I'm attracted to it. I don't have to imagine stories. Okay. Yeah. Although, although I've done it in, in some films, but one thing interesting with the documentary is that the subject is out there. And it's very important. It's and we have to do something about it and shoot it, to share it, to share our view or our argument with with uh, other people. Ramona, why do you do documentaries? Um, I love the process of documentary filmmaking. Uh, uh, my films are usually life unfolding in front of the lens, and um, I don't know where it's going to go. Right? It's almost a, it's a crazy way to make a film, actually. Very and you have to be very zen because you don't know, right? It's gonna lead you to wherever. So you're always like, oh, it might be the abyss. Who knows? But uh, I, I, it's exciting for me. I, I like doing that. Ramona, you don't I, know it's gonna go because you don't work on a script. You basically work on a concept, a story, and then it just unfolds as you're doing the film. Exactly. So it may be that. Um, uh, yeah, it, 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 it can land very many different ways. So, and I always say what's good for the people I'm filming is not necessarily good for my film. So an example, like if Arnel Pineda had did not succeed with Journey, better for my film because failure is really more interesting in a film because then you watch how they overcome it. But I didn't want him to fail. I wanted him to succeed as a person, as a friend. You know what I'm saying? So yes. it, it's almost going against my self-interest to root for him. But, you know, it, it was a Cinderella story. He succeeded. And so that's how the film is. So I, I love the process. I love collaborating with my crew and my editor. I I, I, I love the, it's like how the sausage is made. I, 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 I truly love it. I truly okay. love it. Um, Nicole and uh, Professor Guillermo, from your point of view, I'll go back to Doy and to uh, Ramon about this. Ano yung mga pinakamalalaking challenges ng uh, dokumentaryo sa ating bayan? Well, nabanggit na rin kanina. So tingin ko yung audience, I think it's a very demanding genre. It's not Kaya something... Na ton, uh, Nicole, sino ba ang audience ng dokumentary? Exactly the point, right? Especially if hindi siya required sa school, if hindi woke, kumbaga, yung, yung audience, parang... There's... Joke and the walk. Okay. Oh, di ba? Pero, so I think that's one challenge. Um, sabi nga ni Professor Guillermo, hindi naman tayo sanay sa ganitong genre, unlike they are in the UK, where the BBC kind of socialized the audience to appreciate a medium like this. And also, I think... Meron din kasi question of the format, the ways in which we consume media at the moment, di ba? Na masanay tayo sa short films, masanay tayo na hindi sa cinema na pinapanood, lalo na ngayon dahil uh, pandemic, pwede siyang ipos, pwede kang tumigil sandali, pwedeng mawala yung concentration. So I guess it's not just the question of who watches it, but how we watch it. And it, this, parang it, sets a, parang it changes the way we appreciate the format as well. Kasi ang daling mag-tune out. Pag ang bigat, ayoko na. Hindi ko na ito tatapusin. Whereas if you're in a theater, wala kang choice, di ba? Papanoodin mo yan whether we're talking about torture or we're talking about journey. You're, you are sharing an experience with people around you. But if you're watching it by yourself, in your living room, it's so easy to quit. Exit is an option. Okay. Professor Guillermo, challenges, audience? Um, ay- ayaw kong i-trivialize ang talagang ang ginagawa ng ating mga magaling na ng mga documentaries. Uh, pero sa katunayan, uh, kung pinaroon natin ilang mga, uh, yung ilang mga documentaries, no? halimbawa yung uh, 50 years ng ABS-CBN, makita nyo yung uh, logistical and technical problems at the time to actually uh, film moving uh, subject matter. Ano? Kung baga, uh, yung unang mga camera na ginamit para sa kanilang mga television stations, ay, you needed two, pe- two or three people to carry those cameras. Ano? Uh, tapos, uh, uh, by the 80s, of course, nag-develop na yung ating mga uh, mas uh, handheld ano? Uh, equipment na ginagamit natin. Ng, uh, I think it created a, uh, also a revolution in, in documentary filmmaking. Uh, yung yung um, sinabi nga ni Sir Doy kanina, 
uh, he was actually able to make a, a documentary uh, in Singapore on a zero budget, no? uh, using uh, probably um, VHS or some other uh, uh, medium, no? na mas uh, mas portable, no? So ngayon, uh, everybody has uh, these uh, ca- these uh, cameras on their phones, no? Everybody actually has a uh, has these uh, devices, no? So uh, starting from the perspective of production, no? uh, for example, of uh, documentary film production. I think ang laki ng potential ngayon na maka-encourage tayo ng mas maraming mga kabataan na gumawa talaga ng mga uh, documentaries. And the job of our of our very good fi- uh, documentaries is to is to set a standard to help train uh, our young people to make uh, documentaries, you know. Of course, uh uh because of the ubiquity of, of cameras and not all of this will be, you know, uh worth watching, you know. Pero uh, I think So, may, a lot of it will be uh, may, may mga talents talaga na, ma, na that will have opportunities to you know to make make their own thing no so um yun ang isang bagay so sa, sa production side ng documentaries i think uh we we can actually have uh, a lot more uh production mga mga guro sa mga eskwelahan uh pwede silang uh pwede magkaroon sa mga eskwelahan ng mga uh let's say at workshops ano Let's say um, with, with our with our great uh, documentaries and also uh, festivals of, docu- of documentaries. Like you know, what the mga conversations documentaries. I think uh, this is a good time to do to do this, you know? and uh, this will also help offset the problem of uh, of all these very bad or fake uh, uh, documentaries documentaries that are going on. Okay, uh, at Ramona. Uh, the, let's go to the audience. Who is your audience? When you do your documentary, do you have an audience in mind, uh, Ramona? I always say my first audience is me. <laughs> if mm-hmm. I'm um, uh, if I'm interested in it, if I get surprised by my story, I always feel there is someone out there who will get surprised like I am. Um, but talking about audience, boy, I think the documentary form is evolving. And it's becoming, uh, at least, here. I mean, you know, witness Netflix, right? There's so many documentary, do- not only one-offs, what we call, you know, a 90-minuter, but documentary wow. series like Tiger King and all the true crime documentaries. Right. So I think those attract a more mainstream audience. So the, the taste for documentaries are, 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 are changing. It's becoming more stream. I, I think there were... It was harder to get to that because documentaries have always had the reputation for being like vegetables. You have to eat your vegetables. You know, it's like hard to watch because it has its roots in uh, dry educational films and you know, s- stuff like that. That that's those are the roots of the documentary. But now it's evolving and um, gaining a bigger audience. I think. Uh, but as far as my audience, I always feel like the, the audience will come if I am telling a um, uh, a compelling story. And I, 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 if it's compelling to me, I hope it's compelling to someone else, right? right. Uh, I, I, I hate to, I, I always, uh, I hate to pander to an audience. I always think that I always have, I have to respect my audience. I have to respect that they're smart and that they'll get it. Okay. Because uh, I think if you underestimate them, then... It's okay. So, Ramona, wh- what is your benchmark of success? What is your benchmark of success? If I sell the film. Um, uh, so, here, my benchmarks have been where I premiere, right? Because it really matters where, I, where documentaries here premiere. So, where you premiere is key because then it sort of um, it dictates the life of the film after. Uh, so if you premiere at Sundance, that dictates the life of the film okay. um, more easily. So, and then if I sell it, if it gets on broadcast, if you, to me, that's that, because that means I can do my next film. It's always to me about the next film. All right. Okay. Doi, let's go to the audience. And I wanted to, I, I wanted to get your comment on, ang documentaryo ay parang gulay. Alam mo yun, pinipilit kang kainin in the beginning. It's dry, but it is evolving, sabi ni Ramona. And then, do you think of your audience? I mean, did you t- think of your audience when you were doing Made in Singapore? Um, well, for that particular film, I just wanted to share what I saw in Singapore with 
of the the Filipinos, my fe- my country fellow country men in Manila or in in the Philippines. Para makita nila yung nakita ko. Uh, but uh, I I I think I work as, like an indie filmmaker. You know, when when you do an indie film, usually you don't think about the audience. You just worry about finishing the film. You know, that, that's why the, the benchmark for success is when you finish the film. Okay. And hopefully somebody picks up the film and, and uh, watches, watches it or distributes it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Nicole, yung role ng dokumentaryo, uh, katulad ng sinabi ko sa umpisa, at kung ilalagay mo yung kwento ng bayan, kwento ng tao, uh, saan natin pinagdudugtong yan? And uh, where are we in that sense? Yeah, so I think dito hihiram ako sa parang sobrang classic sociological concept, diba? It's the connection between biography and history. It's the connection between individual and society. I think that is why compelling documentaries are documentaries that give the perspective not just of the filmmaker, but of a particular character that we often take for granted. So a while ago, I was talking about uh, Aswang, na ang, ang storyteller dun sa Aswang ay isang bata na hindi naman directly related sa Tokhang. It's just incidentally, nandun siya at makakatropa niya yung, yung nabiktima ng Tokhang. And that to me is powerful because it invites that individual whom we otherwise would not meet if it weren't for that documentary to go to our screens in some, in, oftentimes in the privacy of our homes. And I think that is the power of documentary in nation building. It connects disparate communities. It connects imaginary communities together um, in a mediated format. And to tell a story, diba? Yes. Uh, uh, Professor Guillermo? Uh, uh, well, um, siguro I can only answer siguro in an empirical way, you know, dun sa um, napatawad kong mga dokumentaryo uh, na inihanay dito sa festival um, sa ating, sa ating uh, session ngayon, ano? At um, kita ko ron, ano, um, don sa mga documentaries um, I think a lot of a lot of these documentaries they revolve around um, a very um, uh, major historical event you know? at makita nyo nga eh, they yun talagang yung turning point you know? at least for most of the documentaries that we watched ay yung EDSA you know? yung question of dictatorship and what happened after the dictatorship uh, the 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 documentaries not they were all different documentaries they were discussing different aspects of of individuals histories but they they inevitably or they were all turning around a uh, this turn historical turning point in the philippines you know? uh, parang, parang unavoidably you know? and um, so that's why uh, all of these uh, uh, documentaries are because they 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 could not avoid or in fact they were facing uh, the centrality of this of this event and still you know, up to this up to the present you know, up to this moment you know, still trying to make sense of that <laughs> historical turning point in philippine history you know uh, bagay na makikita doon you know? and i think that was one theme na na uh, na makikita ron. but also one one aspect that I saw uh, into some documentaries nito was also a technological uh, turning point. Uh, that I felt rather, it was rather poignant for me, you know, because you can actually mark, you know, the time before the internet, before cell phones. Ante ngayon ang nakikinig sa ating pag-uusap. Uh, I'll go to you, uh, Nicole Andoy. Kanina, we were starting to talk about the, you know, the responsibility also of our audience. Ito ang tanong, ako'y estudyante, wala naman akong kakayanan halimbawa mag-produce ng aking doc- uh, documentary. But, you know, there's this desire to be part of the storytelling. How do I become, how do I contribute, you know, to, to the narrative? How do I contribute as a student to the storytelling process. Uh, Nicole, and then I'll go to Doi. Ako, embrace your medium. Sobrang naaasar ako to people who dismiss 
digital media as a space for voice and storytelling. People who are so elitist against TikTok, porque ang ikli ikli lang ng time allowed in TikTok. But increasingly, we also see these digital technologies, despite issues of algorithm, despite issues of surveillance capitalism, there is still space. For I mean, some of the interesting TikTok videos, for example, are makeup tutorials that draw our attention to how Uyghurs in China are oppressed. Diba? And I think these are very creative, not very serious, but communicative ways for young people to use their mobile phones for them to experiment on the genre of storytelling. So sa tingin ko, magandang na-embrace yung democratization of storytelling platforms right now while remaining fully cognizant of the limits of the platform. Okay. Uh, Doi? Yeah. Uh, well, I think students uh, don't have any excuse today you know, not to be able to make the, the, the films that they want to make. And uh, uh, they have to take advantage of the fact that they have access to the medium, you know, mobile phones even, uh, to, to make their films. So, but, but first they have to be connected with what's happening, you know, around us. If, if they're disconnected and, and just absorbed with themselves, you know, I, I, I don't think that should be the, the attitude, right? Especially with, with what's happening today, you know, the, the pandemic. So if we don't learn a lesson here, and, it's, and the, for example, the young ones don't get connected to the real problems that we're facing, uh, then there, 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 there is a major problem. But I hope that they, they would be connected with, with what's happening around them and they do their part you know, to, to tell their, uh, their kind of a story that they want to tell based on their experience you know, mm -hmm. of, of what's happening around them. Yeah. Professor Guillermo, uh, na mention nga ni Doy yung uh, pandemic. Paano ba maaapektuhan ang ating kwento bilang bayan nitong pandemic na ito? Um, uh, sa ngayon, siyempre, ongoing yung kwento na ito. No? Sa katunayan, uh -huh. hindi, paano matatapos ang kwento ng pandemic, hindi uh, lang sa Pilipinas, kundi sa, sa buong daigdito. Uh -huh. At uh, yung, siyempre, pwede, pwede isang patingin sa pandemic o yung ating pagtalaki sa kasaysayan o karanasan ng pandemic. Pwedeng uh, mula doon sa privilegiadong posisyon. Ano? Na, okay, nasa bahay lang ako, ano? Uh, Nakaka-bore dito, ano? Nanonood lang ako ng Netflix, ano? Tuloy-tuloy lang, ganyan, no? Uh, o kaya, uh, hindi na ako lumalabas, nag-zoom na ako palagi, no? Pwedeng ganun yung ating uh, maging mga problema, no? Kaugnay ng uh, uh, pandemic ngayon. Pero isipin natin, no? Maraming mga tao kinakailangan lumabas. Maraming kinakailangan maghanap ng trabaho, kabuhayan, ano? Napakarami nang nawala ng uh, trabaho ngayon talagang uh, bagsak na bagsak ano uh, at wala nang at wala makitang uh, mga ang maraming mga tao kaya uh, kailangan sa isang banda madokumento ano madokumento ng ating mga uh, dokumentarista na mga gumagawa ng mga nar naratibo natin ng na mga nangyayari merong mga inisyatiba diyan sa halimbawa sa mga writers merong mga inisyatiba ng uh, pag uh, pagsusulat ano ng mga kwento o ng mga ng mga kahit mga nobela tungkol sa kasulukuyang mga uh, nangyayari sa pandemiko. Kailangan na itala ano itong uh, sa katunayan napakamakasaysayan na na panahon ano uh, ng ating uh, nilang and this is ex, ex, very global no this is very global of course with very specific uh, uh, issues ano uh, in each country ano at uh, syempre ang Pilipinas ngayon ay uh, masasabi natin isang napakaproblematikong lugar kung pandemiko ang usapin ano uh, uh, kumbaga, uh, pandemic hotspot. At uh, wala pa tayong makitang um, uh, ganap na solusyon ano, sa hinaharap. So, uh, I think, uh, uh, aside from another issue ano, dito sa pandemic na ito, ay usapin na psychological trauma ano, na dinaranas ng maraming kabataan ano, ng mga ngayon. Ano. And I think this is something that uh, we should really, uh, we should document. This, this trauma, this very traumatic event. And I think, uh, this also appeals to a lot of documentaries. Uh, documentaries have to deal with many, many uh, traumatic uh, events and have to help societies process, come to terms uh, with these traumas. You know? So, um, napakalaki ng trabaho na kinakailangan gawin ng ating mga uh, dokumentarista, ng mga gumagawa ng mga naratibo, mga salaysay, mga social scientists natin. This is a lot of work and, uh, and uh, we don't see at the end, but we will help 
we, if you do our work, you can help see this to the end. Maraming salamat. Narito ang isang katanungan mula sa uh, Facebook. Uh, and I'd like uh, Ramona uh, to address this from Aaron Medina. There are good and critical documentaries which do not get into wider public attention. On the other hand, revisionist propaganda through vlogs are gaining some traction. How do legit documentaries and documentarists compete for public attention versus the revisionist environment? You know that are they equal in getting attention? I, I'm not aware that they are, right? So uh, I think uh, my reality here is that um, there are the real legitimate documentaries and that there are the documentaries that are in a way propaganda. And it's very obvious, right? There are propaganda films that are, say, in my reality here for Trump, right? And it's very clear that that's a different kind of propaganda. I'm not sure that... Um, I'm not sure that they're equal, and I'm not sure that they're getting equal weight and equal attention. Um, in, in, in my lived reality, uh, real, whatever, legitimate documentaries are gaining more ground. They call it, they even call it the, the golden age of documentary Documentaries. filmmaking here. Mm -hmm. uh, for, not for everyone, it's not equal, right? It's not, uh, it's not equal for everyone. If you have access to resources, it's, it's probably the golden age of documentary. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm not sure I answered your question, but I, I, I don't think that they're on equal footing. Okay, you got that. Doi, may nais kang idagdag doon sa katanungan? Yeah, um, I, I, I don't think any uh, questionable film or a revisionist film is included in the Ang Dokyo. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess they, they, they've done their... <laughs> their work you know, and they've chosen that the films that sh should be shown. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Professor uh, Guillermo, go ahead. Ah, yun, uh, gusto ko kasi dagdag kaug na yun itong uh, usapin nga ng mga revisionist um, documentaries or material no, that we can see in the internet. Ang, ang isa kasing uh, um, katangian ano, itong uh, medium ng uh, social media ay uh, yung nga tinatawag natin mga echo chamber, no? di ba? Na yung mga tao, na, di ba? I, in fact, it was quite gradual uh, for me, this phenomenon na yung balita ko, hindi din ako nasa social media, you know? Dati, ano eh, dati masipag pa ako. Pupunta ako na sa mga uh, sites of the news, of the, of the newspapers, right? Generally. Um, for example, even Rapper Inquirer, no? hindi din ako muna yung kanilang, kanilang site tapos babasa ng balita ron. Pero ngayon, parang, I let, I let, you know, social media do the thing for me. Now, if something pops up in social media from Raptor or something, it's interesting. Ko rin yun, no? But I hardly go directly to the uh, to the news sites themselves. So, no? Ngayon, dahil nasa algorithm ng uh, Facebook, things pop up which they expect you or to want to read. You know? uh, so this creates a kind of a, a, a media echo chamber. At marami sa ating mga kababayan na, hindi ba, kung ako ay pro sa kasalukuyang... Uh, Presidente, ano? Tapos na determine yan algorithmically, and also uh, dahil uh, ganito yung aking uh, social media behavior, I can actually create a kind of uh, a kind of uh, curated uh, library of images no? that that, pro that that surround me, you know, that only supports what I my own tendency, what I feel, ano? and what I want to see and what I want to hear, you know. Ito ang problema kasi ngayon ng uh, kasalukuyang uh, um, yung challenge, not a problem, but it's a challenge for uh, people today. Pinapanood ko yung maraming documentaries. Yung, uh, nakita niyo yung the, the age or the era before the internet, the age of the, or the era before cell phones. Ano? Nakita niyo eh, more or less, we had, um, if we listen to music, you know, people had their own machines. They were blaring their music. You know, we, the, if they wanted mo movies or documentaries na maraming uh, na-interest dyan, o sige, pupunta yung mga kabataan doon, papanood nila. Kung may music, kahit paanong music yan eh, Kahit hindi nila masyadong type, napapakinggan nila sa paligid nila. But today, you can shut, down, shut out everything that you don't want. You know? And stay in your niche. You know? Stay enclosed in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this cocoon that you created yourself. In the, in, of images. A cocoon of images. You know? So, ang, ang problema dyan, how to break this? You know? uh, mm -hmm. How to insert yourself you know, into these cocoons? Eh, kasi napansin ko sa social media studies na ginagawa ko, 
eh talagang ano, uh, not resistant, ano? Ang maraming tao na manood ng mga, ng mga types of material na that would question, that would question their uh, beliefs. They are not bad people, ano? They're just ordinary Filipinos, ano? But uh, they have, uh, kumbaga parang merong reflex uh, sila to sort of shut out, mag-swipe to the right ka lang, wala na yun, eh. Ano? So easy to get rid of these things. So uh, yun yung isang challenge ngayon. And uh, if you compare yung era no, of those old documentaries to the current documentaries, it's it's a very challenging uh, problem that we face. No? Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, just, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, j- it's hard to get out of that bubble, right? Because the bubble has been created for you. It's really not of your making. It's been created for you by social media platforms. And very interesting thing to do is um, compare your feeds, right, with someone who is so unlike you, who somehow believes very different, uh, like has different political views, right? A DDS, for example, right? Compare your feeds and it's so interesting because then you understand that you are trapped in your own bubbles. And then if you start sharing what you, um, what each of you is getting, it's like a whole different world. Yeah. Not that you have to believe it, but you know, yeah. it just shows you what they're being fed. Got a point. And you're being fed. Okay. Balik ako sa dokumentaryo, uh, Nicole. Meron bang isa, here's a question. What's a big and important story of our nation that may have been overlooked uh, in the storytelling process of our storytellers? Meron I, think it, I think it's the less spectacular form of tragedies that we observe. Ang daming documentaries about typhoons, volcanic eruption, revolutions, But what about the slow violence of poverty or the slow violence of drought? These are less spectacular forms of tragedies. And because they're so normalized and because they're so everyday, we overlook them. So I think some of the most powerful documentaries are those that can problematize what is taken for granted. But if I can just go back to yung sa question ni Aaron ganina about these, um, uh, the revisionist documentaries, okay. I think my That's only important. comment here Yeah, I think my only comment here is they don't exist in a vacuum. It's part of a bigger ecosystem that normalizes that kind of narrative. We cannot isolate that revisionist documentary on martial law without the Philippine Tatler putting Aimee Marcos in its front cover, without influencers making Sandro Marcos look cool. This is part of the cultural re- legitimation of the Marcoses as legitimate cultural actors in this country. So we cannot isolate the issue of revisionist documentary on its own. It's part of a broader um, cultural permissiveness of people that we think have sinned to the nation but have now been forgiven or forgotten or legitimized or even admired. So having said that, what, what do I do as an audience, as a citizen? Uh, what do I do, Nicole? I think it's important to be an irritating citizen right now, diba? Na parang let's not hesitate to irritate other people when we find something uh, is amiss with the way culture represents morally reprehensible actors. And I'm not being polemical here when I say morally reprehensible actors because as we mentioned earlier, there are truths and there are facts. And there are facts that are derived from judicial, uh, from the judgment of courts, right? So I think as citizens, that is my practical advice. Let's not hesitate to express disgust and discontent because otherwise, we normalize lang yung ganitong classing permissiveness. Okay. Um, boy, boy, you were ahead, asking, boy. Yeah, you were asking about the question, what, uh, what subject has not been covered? Yes. Or not pr- properly covered, yeah. Well, the, the ironic thing is that... Uh, Uh, filmmakers or broadcast uh, documentary documentarists have dealt with subjects you know a, a lot of times right that 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 we need to know like like for example the issue of poverty i mean that has been you know uh, done you know a lot of times in in documentaries and and other forms of film but the the problem is uh hindi nakikita nung, nung mga tao, you know. Tinitignan, you know, we did a film uh, once, uh, a documentary film. Tinitignan, hindi nakikita, you know. You know, the audience look at these problems every day, you know, in on TV and on, on films. But for some reason, they don't see it. Okay. You know, tinitignan, hindi nakikita. May merong mata, pero hindi nakakakita. Okay, and, Nicole. And and I don't know what, what the problem is. Yeah. Okay, Nicole and Professor Guillermo, 
totoo to, here's an observation. Hindi lamang sa dokumentaryo, uh, kundi sa media, sa pangkalahatan. Ano yung mga defining narratives, mga kwento of the past, and even of today, that dominate our perception of who we are as a country? I think it's the logic of uh, good versus evil na very, parang, the way we tell our stories about the nation is always bad and good, and the good will win over the bad. I think that logic should be overcome, and that's why I like documentaries that embrace the complexity of gray areas. Kasi doon tayo nagkakatalo eh. Kaya ngayon, parang ang daling sabihin, dilawan ka kasi pro-Aquino ka. As if EDSA is just about the Aquinos, right? So I think that is um, one weakness, I guess, of the national imaginary at the moment. It was built as if it's a question of binaries. And I think what we can learn from the Duterte regime, no, especially with recent polls that say this is a very popular government, I think there has to be a, has to be a reckoning. Parang is the demonization, the good versus evil framing still an effective way of nation building or something that is comfortable with gray areas and comfortable with embracing difficult conversations? Because I don't think we can survive as a nation if our logic is always good versus bad. Okay. Professor Guillermo, can you comment on that? Um, uh, uh, gusto kong uh, balikan ako ang isa na bilang isang malit na point lang yung natanong kanina na tungkol sa ano yung overlook ano, sa... Okay, sa pagkukwento. Uh, documentaries, ano. Um, ano sa tingin ko, at, uh, I agree with the Sir Doy, ano, na ang problema, talagang maraming, maraming ginawang mga, ginagawa, ginawang mga documentaries. I think it's the documentaries themselves that are being overlooked. No, it's not, it's not a thing that, it's not that documentaries, doc, doc, documentaries overlook many things, ano. In fact, they try to make a lot of documentaries about serious topics and very challenging Uh, themes, ano? Pero ano nga, eh, the documentaries themselves are overlooked, ano? Hindi nag-circulate sa, sa narapat na bilang uh, ng mga tao. Kaya, uh, kaya yun, may double layer of the issue of overlooking. I think that's a two layers of it. Ngayon, uh, yung ating mga documentaries, so we have to say it, a lot of, a lot of, the, a lot of them are marginal, are mar- mar- marginalized in in uh, in the in the media in the mainstream media no? it's a kind of parang bulay di ba marginal siya no and yung marginality na to allows documentary filmmakers to raise more critical uh questions you know which is not uh, available for example in the more mainstream types of uh, media so there's a kind of pro and a con to it you know on the one hand uh napakahirap na makuha ng malawak na audience kung ikaw ay documentaries on the other hand You have greater freedom to to raise um, more bold uh, questions, to challenge uh, people, to be more critical, right? At yun yung uh, yun yung uh, isang uh, isang potential ng ng. Kasi uh, kiniyan mo sa sogan ko yan because this question is about that, no? Tungkol ito sa painting of the story of the nation and influencing national consciousness uh, sa pamamagitan ng documentaries and media. Uh, is it an equal playing field or are there forces and institutions that are more in control than others? Yeah, yeah. So, totoo yan, no? uh, as I was saying, may, may aspect of uh, marginality. And, and, and one great thing about it is that pwede maging do it yourself. No? Um, you can actually, they, they can actually become a good filmmaker, good documentaries na talagang DIY ang kanilang uh, approach, you know? And they learn, and, and many of them learn by doing, actually, you know, and become very good at the craft, you know. And uh, uh, you know, it's a kind of uh, chosen positionality in our uh, media system uh, in a certain way, so that you can maintain uh, some kind of independence, you know. Okay. And uh, ngayon, dahil nasa ganitong katangian, what do I see in the documentaries that we in the documentaries that we that were shown, you know? And nakita ko rito ay uh, on the one hand, you know, lalo na don sa usapin ng mga historical documentaries natin, you know? eh, what, what, I, what I sort of felt about it was the sort of the fragility of the image, you know? that, that, we, that these images, you know, araw, you know? they could have been lost or they could, the, the possibility that they were, could have been taken was pretty random or contingent. Nang may tao ron na pwede kumuha ng ganitong mga images, you know, having brought a camera. You know? kaya, uh, uh, kaya, uh, and, 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 and some of these documentaries na pinalabas, Uh, ano nga eh, they were rather degraded. Yung iba, no? may mga problems na yung kanilang uh, copies. Ano? So the image is very fragile. 
and uh, and this is and they come from they come to us from the past from a history that it was almost a contingent thing that they that they were even taken uh, that these images are now available uh, to us and are preserved no hopefully uh, also for the future no pero sa ako napansin uh, doon sa maraming documentaries ito uh, as aside from the fragility of the image is the durability of Philippine social structure you know the the durability of the of okay. the line between those with and without power you know the durability of the line between those who are wealthy and those who are poor you know the durability of, of, of the class structure in the Philippines you know so this is what actually what we can see in, in all these in all the films that we saw you know? it's so stable you know it's so it's in fact it's so uh, it's so fascinating how stable this uh, this durable line of power power and powerlessness is okay. in, in the Philippines all right and counterpose to that the fragility of the medium that is used to convey this to the audience ito ay may relasyon diyan sa iyong diskurso uh, professor Guillermo Nicole very briefly lang ito yung comment a lot of these images we see in the ang docu selection about the nation are images na nakita na natin. The stories we already know that we've seen in television. And yet, when the audience watched them, like Aswang, when it premiered via free online screening, the reaction was still immediate, as if the story uh, is fresh, when in fact thousands have already been killed in the drug war. Ang tanong, where can you locate this power of documentary as moving image? Yes, I think it's because the medium personifies people that often are deeper, are parang dehumanized in everyday life, right? Na parang when we talk about the drug war, we often talk about the drug war in terms of numbers, in terms of just another case. But I think what differentiates this story is it gives, um, it brings back the humanity to people that have okay. already been dehumanized for so long. Okay. Ramona, uh, here's a question. Ano yung viability of documentaries and images and furthering meaningful change or its vulnerability to be controlled for political gain? Oh. Um, okay, if I understand the question right, how how do you use documentaries for change? Is that, is, well, is that yes. the question? The viability of documentaries oh. and images and furthering, yes, advancing meaningful change or its vulnerability to be controlled. I, I, I think we go back to documentaries as provocations, right? As uh, questioning... Uh, as as a starting point to question what you're seeing, as a, a starting point to question history, as a starting point to question unfolding stories, I think that's how change happens. And and documentaries really they shine a light on stories that you think you already know, like right, like a swang, the drug war, but we frame it in a different in a way that immerses you in a person's life that humanizes it, like Nicole was saying. That's why it's so different that when you watch it in that form, you, you react differently, right? Okay. And to Nicole's point of, and this is really key, when she says it's not binary, it's really the gray areas. That's why I think um, documentary films that are more nuanced, are more complicated. They're also harder to watch, right? They're, because it takes work from the audience. But those are the films that should be Documents that should be out there because those are the films that really provoke questions and answers and uh, and debate and discussion. And I think that's what's lacking in the public space right now. Real debate, real conversations that are not just left and right, right? Because then you'll never come to the middle. So I think good documentaries really provoke that and have a real robust, real discussions about what's past, what's present and the future and features of gray area that Nicole was talking about. Uh, but can you go to the vulnerability of the platform uh, that can be controlled for political gain? Uh, well, yeah, you see that, right? The, the, uh, let's start with social media. It's weaponized for political gain, right? It's seeded. Um, uh, that's what A Thousand Cuts, my, my current release is about, how they weaponize social media against, say, um, the press, right? Um, they see words like prostitutes, and suddenly that word is part of the narrative. Like it is really a word, and it's really a real thing when it was just invented. But you know, once you say something over and over and over again, it becomes 
real and it becomes truth. You forget that at some point that wasn't real because you normalize it. Mm-hmm. I think that's what social media does. They normalize something that is that may not necessarily be true. And people, uh, people believe it. People will start believing. Or it's not really believing one thing or another. It's just doubting what's true, right? You doubt yourself. It's gaslighting. It's a, you, you doubt whether anything you hear is true. And, and that's deadly if you, if you lose your grounding in that way. Okay. Uh, Ramona, just a quick question. A- anything that you wouldn't touch as a documentarist? Nothing. Okay. All right, Doy, same question. Before I go to Professor Guillermo, meron bang ganun? Uh, lahat ko ikukwento except? Um, well, not, nothing comes to mind <laughs> at the moment. But I, right. I, I think w- whatever uh, I'm passionate about, what interests me, the, the subject has to connect with with something inside me. You know? uh, and and I, would do, I, I would do it. All right. Uh, Professor Guillermo, you wanted to say something? Um, Tawag din nung, ano, nung um, political aspect ano, ng, uh, ng uh, documentaries. Ano? Uh, uh, well, uh, kasi we were looking at, um, for example, yung uh, documentary ng, uh, ng Mendiola, ano, o iba pang mga documentaries na, Massacre, yeah. uh, nitong, uh, nitong festival. Ano? Uh, noong, uh, noong panahon, mga panahon, of course, uh, uh, I, I was, and I still am an activist, ano? And uh, nung, nung panahon na yan, uh, yung, mga, yung mga documentary, I, I, I had a feeling, and I, I sort of knew it, that uh, yung mga documenta- documentaries, gumagawa kami ng mga, mga malit na film showing. Ano? In fact, uh, yung mga malit na film showing na yan ng mga activists, ano? they're quite important for documentaries. Ano? Na, for example, kahit sa uh, women's movements, LGBT community, ano? so workers' movements, the peasant movement. If someone makes a good uh, documentary about, about their struggles, then they, then they, I think they, they, they're a good audience uh, for this kind of material. At nakita nila yung potential of this material. And what is the potential? And the potential is teaching. No? As a teacher, for example, naghahanap pa talaga ako ng mga materials na mga gamit sa uh, pagtuturo. And teaching as an activist is different from teaching as a teacher. Because if you're an activist, then you want, well, you, you can't force it, no? but we want things to keep, create change. We want the image to drive change, diba? And I think some journalists also uh, would like to do this, no? to use the image, to use the word to drive change in society. Kaya yung sa tingin ko, uh, yung EDSA, EDSA Revolt, uh, for example, the images were fundamental. The, uh, the footages were fundamental. Now, without these images, without these footages, no? mas nabawasan ang, ang potential for that uh, for that very important historical event. You know? So I think images, the images that, that documentaries create, that journalists put out there, they can actually function to draw people, to, to make people desire transformation in their society. So yeah, it's not, for, it's not just for you know, questioning that people put out you know, documentaries about the drug war. You know? these, these documentaries about the drug war, they're critical material. They're meant to try to say, Let's put a stop to this. Let's put a stop to this inhumanity and violence. You know? So uh, they want to motivate and mobilize uh, people. You know? So that's one particular political function that, that, is, that is very important of these images and documentaries. Okay. All right. Nicole, I want to go to you. Based, I want to build up on what Professor Guillermo talked about. Yung pagiging isang guru, uh, yung kanyang attitude na uh, gusto niya yung mga images and how he is affected as a teacher. No? Pero paano mo how do you popularize that? How do you sell that attitude, not just to two, three, four teachers, but to more teachers in this country? That's number one. And number two, yung images na sinasabi nga ni Professor Guillermo na nag, uh, nag, nagbago ng pananaw ng ilang tao. Halimbawa, the, the EDSA images. But these are the same images that are used by dissenting, uh, halimbawa, documentarists to prove another point. Mm-hmm. So bilang, bilang audience, saan ba ako lulugar? Let's go to the first question about the teachers, and then let's go to the same use of the same images to, yeah. you know, to deliver the same, uh, I mean, an, an opposing story. Nicole. I think the effectiveness for me ng teacher in this context is not to parang be the judge of the documentary for the student, to be the sole arbiter of what this image means. 
I think the because best I'm not and even most... a judge, but just that attitude to use yeah. as moving images to share it with, you know, like, like young students. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yes, of course. These images are very much part, especially now that teaching happens online. It's more visual. There are more opportunities to circulate these images. But I think beyond showing the image is this approach on how to teach the image, what the image means. And I think where I'm coming from is how we can democratize our interpretation of this image. Because if your image is about democracy, but the way you teach it is so authoritarian, it defeats the spirit of the image. We can use that image to facilitate a debate in class, to allow that as a trigger for children or students to engage in critical thinking. Bakit may tanke dyan? Bakit may madre dyan? Anong ibig sabihin yan? Let's learn how we interpret this image together rather than saying, ito totoo, ito fake, that's the truth. Parang, I think that's very difficult because doon na magkukulang yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina. We have students who stop asking questions. Because when we talk about democracy, the way we teach them is we ask them objective exams without necessarily teaching the skills of critical thinking and the democratic ethos that's necessary for democratic citizenship. So I think that's my, if, yeah, as a teacher myself, that is my approach uh, to teaching, to, to use these images to facilitate conversation and encourage critical thinking. And if there are dis dissenting opinions, critical questions, revisionists in my class, I welcome it. But we also have to learn how to challenge each other. Okay, let's go to the images that Professor Guillermo was talking about earlier. Halimbawa yung EDSA, di ba? Powerful images. Pero ito yung napapanood din namin doon uh, sa mga ibang documentaries, halimbawa, na nagsasabing, you know, it didn't mean anything. Yes, so let's bring that voice in the classroom and then let's tra challenge our student to debate that or if they agree with that, to, to, to defend their views. I think the teacher can facilitate that debate and give the two sides of the story and then let the students decide. Um, I think that is a more democratic way of saying it without forgetting the facts. And I think that is the important distinction. Nangyari to, ganitong araw, pinablish siya ganitong, ganitong dyaryo, ito yung supporting facts. Then let's understand the context where these pictures are portrayed and let's have that discussion. Doi Professor Guillermo, sa ngayon ba sa setup natin sa ating edukasyon, ang mga guru ba tinutulungan para kasi yung critical thinking, halimbawa to encourage, uh, to uh, incite critical thinking, to encourage critical thinking uh, mula sa mga teachers. How, do we have teachers who, who can actually, you know, do we have policies? I'm not even talking about government policies, but halimbawa, uh, yung mga uh, yung mga eskwelahan. Meron ba tayong mga programa na nakakatulong sa mga guro, halimbawa, to encourage critical thinking, uh, disagreements, debates in the classroom? Meron ganon sa mga eskwelahan kung saan kayo nagtuturo? Well, um, um, talaga nga niyan eh. Uh, aspiration ng lahat ng mga guro na mag-develop mag, mag ng critical environment sa kanyang classroom. No? Ang problema lang talaga ay uh, maraming mga uh, obstacles. No? I mean, in general. No? At ngayon, halimbawa, the specific situations we're in, mga Zoom, uh, Zoom classrooms, ano, ganyan, talagang napaka-challenging nito kung, uh, kung critical. Napuputulan nga tayo ng internet no? at saka nawawala-wala yung teacher. Ano? Napaka-problematic ng uh, kasalukuyang sitwasyon. Pero sa ordinaryong uh, sitwasyon dati, talagang minority, uh, napaka-minority ng given yung pressures. Ano? I mean, we're not saying this is a teacher, this is a student. Ano? This is a kind of a whole, uh, a whole uh, educational infrastructure that we have to overhaul para magkaroon tayo ng, uh, ng to encourage uh, critical thinking. And one thing that really went against the um, the development of of the or the emphasis on critical thinking in higher education institutions ay yung pagtanggal ng ating mga general education programs, pagtanggal ng history subjects, pagtanggal ng mga literary, 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 literature subjects. In fact, ito yung mga subjects sa history at saka sa literature where you can show documentaries to students ano, and discuss them. No? This is a great opportunity. Pero dahil nga, ang tingin na sa mga ito ay mga superfluous subjects that, uh, you know, that students should be uh, you know, working on their um, specializations. Ano? They don't need uh, you know, the humanities anymore. You know? Nakaka, ano, nababawasan yung space in our institutions to actually pose uh, these questions. And the funny thing, uh, minsan din yung ating mga educational uh, uh, policy makers, sabi nila, critical thinking is a skill. I don't believe that critical thinking is a skill. A skill is something that you do over and over again. 
and you become better and better at it. Critical thinking is to go beyond repetition, to go beyond what what is done, not just to copy something, you know, okay. repeat something, but to break through, transform things, go into a new horizon, you know, right. beyond what we do, what we did before. Kind this skill ang ang critical thinking. It's something okay. more fundamental than that. Doi. Uh, wow, yan na ba yung mirror uh, boy na hinaharap mo sa amin? Yeah, okay. harap mo natin may hiwagay. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, well, of course, in the classroom, we, we try as much as possible no, to encourage uh, critical think- thinking. Uh, the university is an ideal place. You know? It's a place where a lot of ideas are brought forth. And are discussed, you know. Um, it's, but of course, it's not divorced, uh, separate from what's happening outside, right? So, yeah, we, we, that 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 should be the the aim actually in the university, you know, to to talk and discuss and to argue about issues. The encouragement of critical pri- thinking is a pri- uh, primary uh, objective and create a vibrant community between teachers and, uh, you know, among teachers and uh, between teachers and students, you know, that, that whole community where uh, debate is spirited and uh, because that's where change and growth uh, happen. You, were, you wanted to say something, Professor Guillermo? Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Ramona, uh, may, may nagpapatanong lamang because, you know, your, your documentaries uh, brought you so much fame. Uh, it's a question. Uh, Ms. That's Diaz, relative, you, I think. <laughs> are you comfortable with fame? Uh, gosh, I don't feel that famous. Guess. No, don't? I don't at all. It's it's yeah. It's I, that's why I think that's relative. I, no, I don't. Um, I, I I think it's um, it's anathema to what I do because right, I have to remain anonymous because uh, I, I think fame then that takes away. It, it, if I'm not, then uh, I can't blend into the different environments where I go to film, right? So anonymity, I think, is really key to what I do. Because otherwise, um, I, I have no use for fame in my work. Because I really like to, I like to immerse. I like to immerse in people's lives. And I like to really blend as much as possible. Of course, that is not possible because the presence, and this is a whole other discussion, the presence of the camera changes whatever happens, right? The, your very presence changes already what, what will happen in front of it. So uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think, I, I have no need for it. That may, maybe only because, maybe I can then raise the next, uh, you know, money for the next film. You know, that's my only use for it. But in no, but next, actual work. Okay, I, well, Ramona, I, which is primary. I mean, as you said earlier, it's the next yes. Film. It's about the next film. Do I do you agree? It's anathema. So I mean, I know that's something personal to Ramona, but you know, is is fame anathema to your work as a documentarist? I I don't think it comes into play. You know, or I, uh-huh. uh, it, it even comes into my mind. Uh, no, no, no. And and oh, and and that's why I I don't think uh, that the aim of the the documentary filmmaker is to be able to to show the, the film in a lot of festivals and to win awards. No, that okay. that that is just an adjunct to the process, you know. But that is not the aim. So, so fame is that doesn't doesn't play at all you know, okay. in in the process. I, I, I think it's a, it's an aim for me because that's how I build a sustainable career. For me, right? It's uh, it's really about being able to make the next film and the film after that and the film after that. So um, how I, how it rolls out, how it's seen, how it's reviewed, how it's uh, critiqued is really important to my, building my career as a filmmaker, as a, a sustainable career. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, you must admit, uh, Ramona, what, uh, you know, in, in real life when, you know, people, I, I'm, I'm sure of this, you know, when people say, I'm sorry, you're Ramona Diaz, the director of you get that yeah i do i do but then 
it's it's a, it's also very surreal to me because I don't <laughs> always get it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, you saw it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I put it out there. You hope people see it, but of course now it's more immediate, right? Your your my connection with the audience is more immediate because of social media, because right. I can we can directly uh, engage with the audience, which is it's kind of nice. That's what I'm missing in the pandemic, actually, the engagement, the real engagement with with, with the audience in person. Yes, of course I get that, but uh, uh, you you try to forget it, I, right? It's not the point of the of of making documentaries at least it's not i think it's an impoverished way to live to go after fame <laughs> right i mean because then it's fame for fame's sake is like what i like is what that you say about it. i don't know it's an impoverished way to look at fame <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that, that's a lie nicole how can we encourage more people how uh, especially the young you know to, yeah. to watch uh, documentaries Actually, to be honest, I find it very difficult to answer that question because there are realities we have to embrace. People are time poor, there's digital poverty, and in this current context, attention is the scarcest resource, right? Yeah. So I think I don't want to be preachy to tell young people to watch documentaries, but I think we also have to shift the conversation in terms of audience blaming. Na hindi kasi siguro pa masyadong mulat yung Pilipino, kaya hindi makanood ng documentary. I think there are also bigger structural barriers why it's hard for us to appreciate documentaries. So I think I'm coming from that perspective of siguro empathy to people who find it challenging or find it intimidating uh, to watch a documentary. Maybe they first have to be able to see a documentary that resonates, that's friendly to open doors to other documentaries that may open their eyes further. So I think the conversation can begin there. Recognition that people are time poor, digitally, po well, not impoverished, but there's digital poverty <laughs> and there's attention and there's attention deficit, which are real problems um, in, in this age of surveillance capitalism. And, uh, but I think about that, um, the attention, um, because deficit. it's also an age of binge watching right a lot of yeah. people are binge watching long series and they can stay there forever so i, I i'm not sure uh, about that so i think it's really about content i think there are what they, we call oh, it's about what i call gateway drugs right gateway mm -hmm. gateway drug documentaries that then can lead you to other documentaries yeah, exactly. i think it's just trying mm -hmm. to um show them the form that these are the different kinds of documentaries you can watch and then and then lead them to the really, you know, the more, I hate to say important ones, but uh, just make them get used to the form first. I think that's key. And then they'll, if they like it and enjoy it, they'll watch more and more and more of it, right? It can't be medicine. It has to be, who said that if you want to make, if you want to get people's attention, uh, make them laugh or they'll kill you, right? I, who said that? I think Charlie Chaplin. So humor is a great way to, uh, as a as an entry documentary form, there are many kinds of documentaries. There are humorous documentaries. There are poignant ones. There are drama. It's it's uh, documentaries are not a it's not a genre. It's a form. And under documentaries, there are many genres. So there's something for everyone. I think. Okay, I think you're talking based Yay, on for the documentary. <laughs> no, and then expose people to as many forms as possible, because uh, what Nicole was trying to say was there should also be a recognition that right now in this country, pag sinabi mong documentary, eh, kailangan mag-isip, kailangan, you know, th that's why it's um, contradictory to the, not, not contradictory, but you binge because it's uh, entertaining. Because it's entertaining. Yeah. So I think exposure to diverse kinds of, uh, you know, of documentaries can, can start, you know, that, yeah. that, uh, that a habit which is very important. Um, like it's not all gulai, right? There's also candy and... Ang <laughs> kailangan iba't ibang luto. Kung gulay man, dapat iba't ibang luto. Dahil maganda sa katawan ng gulay. Uh -oh. We cannot also deny that uh, gulay is good uh, uh, for the body. Of course, yeah. Pero iba-ibahin lang natin yung look, yung packaging, para kaaya-aya at uh, palatable. It becomes a sybaritic feast. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, boy, I don't think uh, uh, our audience would binge watch uh, Aswang followed by <laughs> Menjola Massacre, you know, and, and the other films. Yeah, um, there, yeah, 
they they look for a mix of uh, documentaries. Yeah. Uh, yung gusto kong uh, idagdag ay kung ano yung ni uh, Ramona kanina that that you know the evolution of documentaries hasn't stopped. You know? So I think uh, uh, documentaries can continue experimentation with the with the form. You know? And that so that we, yung concept natin this is a documentary. It's like this, no? And uh, this is the, these are the components. Ganyan. Oh, another boring documentary. Says me, the mga uh, kabataan, no? So I think uh, it's it's since it's not it hasn't stopped evolving, you know. And there are you know uh, so many things we can do today to develop new 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 kinds of documentaries, new doc new kinds of documentaries. I think um, this will involve you know um, experimentation. Kaya um, we shouldn't be hopeless in that case, you know. Dapat optimistico. And that's also something that uh, I think that's something that's also fun for a documentary to do to experiment with the form. Oh, okay. yeah, that, that's without, without that's true. Uh, yeah. That's ahead. true, Ramon. You know, uh, the documentary is not uh, is is not a generic uh, form, right? The the form uh, that changes, and there are experimentations being done by filmmakers. For example, in in Dang Doc, you, you you we have. Uh, uh queer transnational love you know uh it's yeah. not just about these two uh, you know uh, queer love it's a, it's a very academic documentary it's very theoretical you know when i was watching it i was wondering oh, oh wait a minute this is not just a love story it's theory you know about a queer transnational love and uh, that that's interesting Uh, I just wanted to build on your point also, uh, Professor Guillermo, pero habang nag experiment ka rin, uh, habang, uh, yun nga, kaya napag-usapan natin kanina, that to a certain point, it is, expo- it is important to know who you're talking to, but also, you cannot leave your core. Kasi uh, malulusaw ka rin eh, as a form. Uh, pag iniwanan mo yung core, okay, right now, part of the perception is, Ah, medyo nag-iisip, medyo may pagka-boring. I think Rowan was making a point that uh, iba-iba ang ma... I, I think hindi tayo dapat mapagod sa kapapalabas ng iba't ibang klase ng dokumentaryo without having to leave its core image. Because there's a truth uh, that uh, documentaries uh, own. May pag-aari siya eh. Nag-iisip ka, Nicole. You wanna say something? Go ahead. <laughs> hindi ko po alam. Ano po yung core, Bale? yung yung core na tatana no yung nagkukuwentong na uh, halimbawa nakakatawa uh, nakaka-entertaining siya pero para sa akin ang dokumentaryo ay ay, ay kwento ng bayan kwento ko bilang mamamaya mm-hmm. meron akong paki-alam to me that's the core kasi yung mm-hmm. ibang visual format ay may kanyang may kanyang forma yeah. may kanyang responsibilidad ah uh, ayoko ring iwanan para sa akin, I, I think the, the go ahead yeah boy boy the, the core is truth You know, yes. in the documentary. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's na, why truth, truth is truth is real. You know, <laughs> it's not what the, the title says. Perception is real. Truth is not right. Uh, uh, after an the hour document- and a half, doy. We're, we're yeah, the yeah, we're we're coming we're up with that. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, but I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I think that. Yeah, the core is, uh, for me as a documentary filmmaker, the core is my contract with the audience that I am telling some kind of truth. I have a contract with them. And that's the core of it. Like like Doi said, it is it's, it's truth. Now, I will not argue with it. The only My only problem there, Ramona, is, you know, a revisionist documentarist can also say that. Kaya kailangan talaga uh, discerning. I mean, I think that word was used uh, a while ago. Discerning yung audience. Dapat may indicators. Dapat uh, merong guro, uh, the pedagogy component to this whole discussion. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a solitary exercise. It's, it's an experience of, of, of a community of many students, teachers, mamamayan. Kailangan hindi tayo mag-iwanan para hindi tayo mawala doon sa ating kwentuhan. But uh, thank you, guys. We can talk uh, about this forever. I'll just go uh, for closing statements, as we would do it in the talk format. Ano ang nais yung iwana na mensahe para sa mga nakikinig sa atin? Let's start with you, Doi, please. Well, I hope, uh, as you say, you know, we, we don't lose that uh, communal experience of uh, watching uh, films, and especially documentary films. Because it's necessary after watching a, a, a documentary to do something about it, 
right? So we have to discuss it with other uh, with the other viewers, with immunity. And unfortunately, the, I think the pandemic is, is uh, influencing that uh, real sense because we are losing that communal experience you know, in watching a uh, film and uh, in the documentary that is very necessary. Maraming salamat, uh, Doy. Uh, let's go to you, Nicole. Ako po yung natutunan ko this evening is how um, appreciating documentary is a collective experience. It's a process of collective learning. And I think in the process of collective learning, we open ourselves to be vulnerable, to be fragile, and sometimes to be proven wrong as well. Professor Guillermo. Uh, gusto kong balikan yung uh, sinabi niyo, Tito Boy, kanina. Ano ba yung core? At sa tingin ko yung sinabi niyo kanina na may pakialam ako. Ano? Uh, yun, uh, isang core ng ng documentary. Meron akong imahe, meron akong nailalarawan, at meron akong pakialam. No? At, uh, at yun yung, uh, yun yung uh, tingin ko pinaka-essential ng, ng dokumentaryo. Dapat may paramdam ng isang documentary sa mga nanonood. May pakialam ako. Sana meron din kayong pakialam. No? Okay. Ramona, please. Mine is very simple. Give documentaries a chance. <laughs> Try it. It's not medicine. It's actually a lot of fun, and uh, you will the w worlds will open up to you. And uh, as documentary filmmakers, we'll give you an experience that is uh, unforgettable. So please give it a chance. There are many kinds of documentaries. It is not medicine. It is not even all vegetables. It's very. Ako naman ang natutunan ko ay tama ka nga, Professor uh, Guillermo, ay pakialam, lalo na kung ang pinagkukwentuhan ay kwento ko. Di ba? At hindi ako matatakot uh, magtanong. Uh, I, I hope we, uh, we are able to encourage uh, young minds out there, young people to be uh, more inquiring, to be more questioning. Uh, sabi nga ni Nicole, even if we become irritating, after all, it is a season to be irritating. <laughs> maraming, maraming, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, salamat. Professor Guillermo. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat. Salamat. Thank you so much. Uh, Nicole, thank you. Thank you. Ramona, thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. To everybody uh, who eavesdropped on our conversation, maraming salamat. A recording of this conversation will be available online. At sana ay mapanood niyo po ang mga pelikulang lined up for October 9 to 15 at ang tema po nito ay Nation, all films stream 24-7 and are free of charge. Kaya panoorin niyo po sila sa daangdokyo.com slash watch now. Ngayong darating na linggo po, we will screen once more the films you may have missed during our martial law edition run, Rustling of Leaves, Inside the Philippine uh, Revolution, Mendiola Massacre, Marcos, a Malignant Spirit, and Don't Miss, yung aming pinag-uusapan na aswang, directed by Alex Arumpat. Maraming salamat for joining Reality Check. Perception is real, truth is not. Ang dokumentaryo ay paglalahad ng mga kwento natin. Halaw sa totoo, sabi nga. Pero sa huli po uh, ng kwentuhang ito ay tayo pa rin. Tayo pa rin ang may-ari ng kwento natin bilang bayan, bilang mamamayan. Ako po si Boy Abunda para po sa Daang Docu, the home of Philippine documentaries. Good night.